So I told Andrew Ryan, what do you want a sweaty brow for anyways? Hey there, I'm Tommy the Golly. Welcome to Goblin Guy. You know, I might look like a burning airplane when I'm out on the water, but that doesn't mean I don't love a good underwater city. Of course, my favorite would be the Big Daddy the Mall. Rapture. Screw it, Lannis. We've got blackjack and hookers. I mean, what's not to love? The place is like one big water park filled with lots of treasure, playful neighbors, and magic health care. But be warned. For the scariest thing of all lurks within the shadowed halls of his dead dystopia. Puzzles! Nah, I'm just joking. Short mini games can be great at breaking up the pace of things, which is perfect for D&D games since they're usually quite heavy on dice rolling. So that's why I'm here today, to give you the pipes and knowledge necessary to start plumbing up your own hacking mini game. So let's get splicing! In Bioshock, you remove tiles to reveal pipes before swapping them around one at a time, with the goal being to connect a path from start to finish, guiding a flow of... Uh, metallic liquid. Hmm. Huh. There's other tiles that act as obstacles, but that's the basic idea. Reveal pipes, move them around, lead the liquid, don't let it overflow. Pretty simple puzzle, but that's kind of the point. Easy to set up, easy to play, it takes barely any time to run whether they succeed or fail. So how do we set this up in D&D? Start with an empty template, then add the grid size you want for complexity. Make sure at least two paths connect so you know the puzzle works. Add obstacles, and fill in the rest. Scramble it all around, cl close her up, and you're ready to go. But wait, how do you emulate the, uh, metallic liquid? Well, if you're playing virtually, just use a pen tool to recreate the steady flow as you see fit, depending on your intended difficulty. On actual tabletop, you'll instead need a long pointer object, and you won't be tracing the path, since moving around for everyone will already be hard enough. Instead, you can slowly lower the pointer down like a chess piece, and once it hits the next tile, it is no longer changeable. Well, that's honestly it, but the full explanation can be found bubbled in the folder found below. Just check the description. This is also where you'll find all the tiles you need to get started. So let's quickly go over what each one does. Or should I say, could do. There's plenty of ways about designing this minigame. Maybe you throw a real-time skill check in there. Make them sweat like a real bomb diffusion as they fumble for their dice. Get creative. So, obviously these are the pipes you need to swap around to make a path. First of the obstacles, running into an alarm tile could draw unwanted attention or straight up summon enemies. Meanwhile, an overload tile might cause you to take damage. I like to keep it simple to calculate, so I usually just take away a head die or two. This one's a personal creation of mine. Less like a firewall or more like a pop-up ad. They'll hide multiple firewalls together in a stack under the first layer. This requires players to continually remove the firewalls to finally get to the pipe underneath. This doesn't work as well on tabletop as it does virtually, so I'd swap its rules to make it a skill check. Perhaps after a process, it becomes a wildcard tile to use anywhere. The possibilities are wide open on interpretation and rules. The game works just as well up in an ancient sky citadel as it does in a sunken city. Holy hobgoblin, I didn't even mean to make that connection. Well, that's all the time we got for this episode, boys and girls. This was kind of a pilot episode, so if you'd like to see more of me, please subscribe and let me know what goblin guiding you might want to see in the future. DM tips, monster manuals, let me know and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye bye! Ah, don't worry, I locked the door, he can't get in. Oh shit, he learned to hack out!